going on, you guys? Um, it is a beautiful Saturday afternoon, and I'm not on the trail. I am in the garage. Got the kids playing in the background. Uh, pretty awesome summer day. What the heck am I doing? All right, so I got this brand new engine underneath the hood. That is awesome. Um, I have some wiring left over from the job. Um, we bundled, bundled it up here, but clearly it needs to be cleaned up. It's not as bad as it looks. My wiring is actually um, pretty clean. I spent a lot of time with it, but I have some high current circuits going through the firewall, which I want to eliminate, and I want to have a place that will contain some relays, which is the proper way to switch accessories. Some considerations. My battery is on this side, is on the driver's side, and um, it's pretty tight over in this area. I've got more space on the other side, but I know I'm gonna put a second battery over there. I'm probably gonna to have to move my window washer fluid and I'm gonna take up space over there. So for those reasons, because my battery is on this side, because most of my circuitry is on, on this side, I'm gonna try and build a battery box in this area. Now that's not gonna be straightforward. It's just tricky, there's not a lot of space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first mock something up in cardboard so that I can build a template and then I got a bunch of ABS plastic. Once I have my box mocked up, I'm going to create a template, cut the ABS plastic, and assemble the box. Now also we have to consider, what do we need to fit inside this box? If you decide to do something like this yourself, it's not gonna be exactly the same because I have an 80 series and you probably have something different, but it should be close enough, and the process I go through will be close enough that Maybe you can get some ideas and we'll learn some stuff together and you can build something similar yourself. All right, let's get right to it. All right, I got a haircut. Uh, <laughs> while I've been um, mocking this up, going back and forth between the rig with cardboard and starting to put together the, the pieces, I've changed my plan a little bit. I was going to make this an enclosed box, but then because of the room I have under the hood, which is limited, and because I actually do want this to be accessible if I need to replace anything and I don't wanna have to pretzel my fingers, uh, I think having it open is actually a better solution. And I'll have the relays lined up in back here. I'm gonna have six of them. I'll have the wire blocks here, and then I'll have the fuse block, the Blue Sea fuse block right here. I'll make sure that I reinforce this with some 90 degree angles. And then when it goes into the rig, I'll also mount it very securely. But that way it'll be open and I'll still have access to everything and it'll still be very clean. All right, that's what we're gonna do. All right, we have our layout all mocked up. The next step is going to be to solder and connect everything together. I'm going to do that in time lapse so you guys aren't watching 45 minutes of soldering. You'll get a real good idea for it. Now let's cover some basics. We're building a fused relay box because we have many accessories on our rig. There are multiple ways to do this. You've seen the blocks, the relay blocks that are all integrated circuitry and they have a mobile app that makes it real convenient, you can power various things. Well, I decided not to go that way because we've had some failures within the overlanding community, and if that circuit block goes bad, 
you're done, unless you want to carry a spare, and that's hundreds of dollars. So by making a safe fused relay block, you can replace the relays, you can see what's going on, and it's just a little bit more maintainable than something like an integrated circuit. Let's point out a couple of other things. One, I have a 100 amp breaker right next to my battery, and the wire going to this high quality fuse block, this is a blue C fuse block, which is meant for marine purposes, it's four gauge. So this isn't gonna melt before my breaker throws should something go wrong. And every circuit is fused according to what I'm running on it. So everything is fused. Now, the relays themselves, these are a little bit larger than normal because the relays are in a weatherproof casing. So they're, they're weatherproof. And I want to point out that in the case where I've had to extend a wire, for example, so I can get it to my fuse block, I have soldered it and heat shrinked it. So that joint is going to last forever. It's very safe. Also, on my terminal connectors, on my terminal connectors, it has heat shrink tubing. I like the heat shrink tubing because when I heat shrink this onto the wire, it glues itself onto the wire. It doesn't just get smaller, it glues itself onto the wire. And I just feel much better about the connection at that point. Okay, one other thing. I've decided to negative switch my relays. Why? By negative switching the relays, I can run a negative wire through my firewall to my switch inside, not a hot wire. So that means if something should happen, if the insulation should wear or fray, the wire going through the firewall is negative. It's not going to short out and start a fire. The second reason is if I negative switch my relay, I can run a black wire to my switch and then I can ground the switch at the switch. So I don't have to complete the circuit running two wires. I run one wire to the switch and then one wire to a body ground and the circuit is complete. So there are two benefits. One, reduce the amount of wire and it's more convenient. Two, it's a little bit safer because you're not running hot wire through your firewall. All right, let's get this thing together. All right, we are making good progress. In just a second, in just a minute, or a few minutes, we're gonna talk about which wire goes where when this thing is all assembled. Let's take care of some business. Uh, this video is brought to you by us, Overland Bound, and if you like this video and it's useful, what would really help us out is if you go on over to our website and consider becoming a member of the crew. We have 20,000 members worldwide. They are all ready to help you do stuff like this and also, go out on the trail with you so you're not going alone and help you find adventure. You also get a bunch of cool stuff. So just head on over to the website and check it out. We've got this great app coming out a little bit later in the summer, which is for our members. You guys will really enjoy it. It is awesome. So check it out, link in the description. All right, you guys, let's continue putting this thing together and we'll talk about 
how it gets all wired up. Okay, I'm gonna go through how this gets wired up relatively quickly. First of all, I have a 100 amp breaker that goes right by the battery. It's resettable, it's waterproof, it gets great big thick four gauge wire going directly to the battery and from the breaker into the fuse panel. The fuse panel is powered and that goes into the red wire on the relay. Relays have standard numbers for the terminal. The red wire is number 30 terminal. That is battery power. The blue wire is what powers your accessory and the black wire is a switch to turn the relay on. This white wire goes to 12 volt positive so that when the black wire through the switch is closed, the, the relay will turn power on and send it through the blue wire. That's how that works. Let's go through this quickly. Red wire, that is terminal number 30, goes to battery power. Black wire, that is terminal number 86, that goes to your switch. White wire, this goes to positive 12 volts. The white wire is terminal number 85. The yellow wire in our case is spare. That is for a normally closed circuit. We didn't wire it that way. We are using the blue wire and the blue wire is number 87 and the blue wire is what powers your accessory, okay? So that's how that goes. You'll see there's a diagram on the top of your relay, so you'll be able to see which terminals go where. So again, positive power into the fuse block, terminal number 30, that's the red, is, goes to battery power. Blue powers your accessory, yellow is spare, the small black goes to your switch, the small white goes to battery power. When you ground the black switch, the circuit will be on, your accessory will be powered. Now, this bag is just a spare bag that I have. So I put a spare relay, in case a relay goes bad, I put a spare relay in this bag here, like that. Do, 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 do. And then it also has fuses in there my bag goes right there. That's all there is to it. Now, in order to power an accessory, I switch here, power here, switch here, power here, switch here, power here. They're together, same pattern along the entire bus bar. All right, you guys, I hope that video was helpful. We have more great videos coming up, so remember to hit that subscribe button. It helps us out quite a bit. Also, 
When you guys are out there having an adventure, vehicle dependent travel, overlanding, make sure you do so responsibly. Find out about proper land use and leave it better than you found it. We want you to go farther and do more. And that's what we're gonna help you do on this channel. All right, you guys, until next time, I hope to see you on the trail.